This video will discuss Chrome Natural, which is Chrome's FP1 design, as opposed to FP3, which is a little more traditional hybrid. This will be more of a crown and bridge design. This particular patient has a long history of oral issues with eating disorders and other, and really won't discuss much of patient history, but it was time for the, at least the maxillary arch at this point to be restored. And the doctor opted for chrome and uh, minimal bone reduction through using an FP1 design. The teeth to be extracted are 6, 10, and 11, and this is because the patient obviously has a lot of teeth and therefore there's no space for placing pins. So the teeth come out first to make room in the sockets for the pins to go through. And then the drill depths are a little, little unique on this case uh, because, because it's FP1, because there's bone remaining, the osteotomy guide has to rest higher than normal. And so the drill lengths are one length and then implant placement is a, is a different depth, uh, same, same depth, sorry, but different uh, offset. And they had to be freehand, so freehanded. So we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, this is a nice view of the room. This is, this is Dr. Freed's new surgical suite. Very, very big room. Very nice to work around in it. This case is a Nobel, Nobel Active. Um, Noble Active Kit. So as usual, the pin guide is tried in. In this case, there was a little discrepancy on one tooth. Uh, not quite sure why, but we had to adjust the inside of the pin guide for the lingual of number four until the pin guide seated uh, fully and confirmed, which did. Then the tissue is flapped, labial flap at this point, uh, minimal lingual, mostly labial as typical. Uh, that one implant was trefined. The doctor has a nice trefining kit. I'll show which kit it is here in just a minute. But essentially, just uh, just using a hollow burr, a hollow grinding instrument, and grinding the uh, grinding the bone around it, and then loose. I just kind of fast forward here, loosen up the implant a bit. All kinds of ways to take them out. Like, I've tried piezo before. And it's kind of a it's kind of a guided way to remove an implant as opposed to just you know burring around the uh, around the implant and then just a pair of rongeurs and remove it. Which was a very efficient process. And then we're just showing how the membrane is still in there. Alright, so implant removed, and then the next is to um, section the bridge. The, unfortunately, the patient is in a Very nice patient is in a temporary. So the temporary served as teeth. You know, during the uh, uh, the CT scan and registering models and so forth, um, as opposed to natural teeth, and really worked worked well. All right, so just going to remove the the teeth on the list, and then on a chrome natural. It is of mm -hmm. utmost importance that the buckle plate, that the bone is preserved around the teeth. Mm -hmm. Yes, there'll be some adjustment for the prosthetic, but yeah. that's mostly to widen yeah. it yeah. and to adjust for mm -hmm. inter interproximal you know, uh, bone, like interceptal bone. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. the teeth must come out atraumatically <laughs> because if you lose the buckle plate, <laughs> then obviously yeah. FP1 yeah. is not yeah. going to go as smoothly as you want uh, restoratively. Yeah. Yeah. Or even surgically, but especially restoratively. So, doctor spent an hour um, carefully removing every tooth, every root, and it was quite a tedious job. But you'll see in the end, it really worked out well. Uh, so these are uh, just just tapping around the root, trying to, uh, to to break some bone free, to break the roots free. I think he used just about every technique here. All right, so we're used to this, this technique here, but uh, doctor used um, burrs, used tapping, and it was a you know, long hour of removing the teeth. And we'll get to the result of that in just a minute. Once those are extracted, uh, then the pin guide will go in, be seated, in this case, there were prep teeth in the posterior. There were um, some anterior teeth, and then uh, there's also a uh, there was a posterior tooth 
uh, for seeing the pin guide. So got very good stability and then follow the normal protocol of, uh, of drilling and, uh, and placing the pins, which is, uh, and we, we talked about this uh, during this surgery, just to make sure that the protocol is followed, that you drill, place a pin, drill, place a pin, et cetera. Do not use a surgical mallet until, uh, until all four pins are in and then tap. So that's the best technique we believe to ensure that it's seating passively. So next step is to unclip the chrome locks and now uh, perform extractions. And so once the teeth were removed and um, nicely done, once the teeth are removed, then the next step is to reduce the bone around the sockets in, in, the, in just the right areas. So what, what the doctor will do is take the, uh, the take-home prosthetic, not the rapid appliance, but the take-home prosthetic, will go in, into the mouth and a doctor will seat this, uh, seat the prosthetic until it is passive. Now this is, a, this is always a conversation during the surgery of whether you take away uh, prosthetic, prosthesis material, or whether you take away bone, because there's a little bit of balance here. Right? So we, we have a little bit of rocking in the prosthetic, so we have to figure out where. There's a fulcrum somewhere, and that's that's obviously going to be bone. We know it seats in the uh, in the chrome locks well. So there's a conversation and the conversation is, um, you know, this should this bone be reduced because it's so much lower than this bone? Yes, this will be reduced. Um, but you want to create a little bit of scalloping here. You know, a lot of this just disappears over time. It's just biology. You can't really um, you can't really predict uh, all of this perfectly. But the goal here is to save bone. And so make decisions uh, during surgery of whether it's going to be one or the other. Now, if this prosthetic was made very thin, then the bone has to be reduced. Because if you end up with uh, a prosthetic that's less than 10 millimeters, then you're going to have to open the bite later to make room for, for material. So that in that case, the bone has to go. In this case, there was a choice because the prosthetic is quite tall, especially on 6, uh, 8, 9, and 11. So we ended up reducing the prosthetic and reducing the bone uh, at the same, you know, in the, in the same, um, in the same surgery. So what the doctor would do is try the prosthetic in, use a surgical marker, use a surgical pen, and just mark where the bone was to be reduced. And uh, we went back and forth for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, adjusting the bone in the right area. Dr. White came down, the, the, the restoring doctor, and uh, gave guidance on this of where to adjust. So really the, the three of us were just having a conversation during this whole part of the surgery about where to reduce the bone. So let's go forward. So we're trying it in again. All right, still getting a little bit of rock somewhere. It keeps getting a little bit better, a little better. And we ended up finding there was, uh, there was some uh, hold up back on the right side in the posterior and we were kind of tricked thinking the fulcrum was in the anterior but we figured it out it was the posterior and <clears throat> so mark adjust mark adjust try in such a critical part of this surgery so we just keep going until it seats and then we know we're good to move on so now the bone has been reduced and you can see it really looks Nice here as far as the scalloping, the positions, the, the size of the osteotomies. At this point, uh, we seated the scallop guide. And uh, these days, this scallop guide is optional. We really like to use the prosthetic more. Uh, but there are some doctors that like to use this. But when you order Chrome Natural, this is optional. And it's uh, we, we either charge for it or we don't, depending on whether you order it now. But this guide works with the bone model. And this is what we are suggesting that the, uh, that the osteotomies, that the sulcuses, that the emergence looks like, it, that it would mirror the scalloping of the metal guide. But really the prosthetic can do the same. Once the bone is reduced, then let's move on to placing implants. Um, retrospectively, we probably could have placed these sleeves at the proper 
23 millimeter offset instead of 25. And I don't want to get too complicated about this surgery because it was very unique. But the one drawback was that uh, when placing, the, when drilling out the, uh, the sites, we could drill to the proper depth. But then for placing the implants, doctor had to freehand the last two millimeters and use a non-guided uh, non mount to, to do the final seating. Fortunately, with no bell, the non-guided mount does have um, indexing markers on it. So we're using a depth probe, fine 10, need to go to 12. And and then you can see here, this is a non-guided uh, mount because you can see the gap around it, but it has nubs. And so we matched Nobel's nubs with our nubs and worked out really well. Actually, it worked out perfectly. You'll see the images in a little bit. 12 millimeters. All right, 12 millimeters. So we got to the right offset. And then remove it and move on to the next one. So once the implants were placed and torqued, got nice torque on every one, uh, this was Nobel Active. Doctor drilled to two millimeters on all the sites except one, just a two millimeter drill, and then used the, uh, the self-tapping Nobel Active implant to seat, got very nice torque. And then the next step was to bone profile, which uh, really, if, you, if you're, you're gonna take on natural cases and you want, then you must have a bone profiling tool. And, there's many different ones out there. This one's nice because it's um, not manual. It's, you know, you use a handpiece. You also place, this is Nobel's, uh, actually this is Salvin's, I believe. Uh, maybe this is Nobel's. Anyway, you, you, you place a stem inside the drill. So now you control your, you can control the drill and there's no chance obviously here of contacting the implant when you're trefining it when you're profiling, sorry. So each was profiled very nicely and took a picture of doctor's contra angle. It was a really handy device, right? Contra angle and then the wheel here is what turns the, uh, um, turns the, the, the drill or the, um, the screwdriver, but you just use your thumb. Really very easy to use. Okay, implants are in, profiling is complete, prosthetic now seats. All right, a couple of images here, nicely done. And then uh, the multi-unit abutments are placed. Now with Chrome Natural, there is no uh, carrier guide. It won't seat, you know, the bone is above the metal, so you can't see the carrier guide. So at this point you rely on the indexing uh, at the time of implant placement to be perfect. And then you would look on the surgery mat and you would notice which direction the, uh, the screws are going into the implants and the handles. You can see that on the surgery mat image. So these were all placed just about perfectly. Right? And then the collar heights, you know, this is another very important part of a Chrome Natural. These are all 17 degree implants. These four here, these are 30s. And so the lowest uh, collar height on a Nobel is 2.5 on 17s, 3.5 on 30s. So you could place these implants a little bit deeper so that you don't have any collar showing. Um, well, this is sometimes just kind of a wait and see, uh, but um, a lot of companies have not developed really low shoulders for angled implants, unfortunately. So we picked uh, 2.5s, 3.5s, the lowest possible, placed the temp cylinders, placed the gaskets, and then again, we don't have a carrier guide, so kind of rely on those gaskets to, to, to um, protect the MUAs. And put in the plugs, right? And then, and then here, this is a little, little trick. Use the, uh, in this case, you'll use white. You can see here, this is the, the tooth white, stellar material. Place the tip about halfway in, no further than that. You don't want the material going into the intaglio, contacting an abutment and having a, having a problem there. So just put the, put the tip about halfway in, add the material circumferentially around each site, around each temp cylinder. And then in this case, a doctor um, 
express material and then hit it with a light and then repeat it. Uh, normally recommend just putting some material in every one of them, hit them all with a light. It's a, more, a little more expeditious. All right, unscrewed, removed, looks good. Of course, this is the rapid appliance only because this is a C2F small hole technology case. I won't go through that whole process. Uh, we have a lot of videos that show that process, but we made a model very quickly, just a few minutes. And then we seated the prosthetic, put the copings. These are, these are uh, temp cylinders that are cut down. Now they are inside of the appliance and these are block out rods. And then we are just going to uh, backfill upside down and, and I, I, I made some ports in a few of these for injecting because it was a little mm -hmm. bit obscure and you couldn't see uh, you couldn't see the temp coping. But on a few of them, I just went from the intaglio and, and just flowed liquid and gravity took it down into the well. And same thing, just a little more because it'll settle. All right, so you just backfill. I mean, the goal here is to connect material from the temp cylinder to the prosthetic the and then remove the prosthetic and then finish you know, the rest of the work. The rest of it will be of, uh, of connecting and filling the voids. So I'll just fast forward here a little. You'll be able to see you'll just kind of dropping it down from the taglio. And then this one, this will be an injection. And you can kind of see the material coming up right there by the tip. You see that from the injection port it fills it up. And then this at this point, you'll push the prosthetic to make sure that it is totally closed down on the model push it together, hold it together, and hit it with a light and light cure. All right, so that's off the model. We've cut off the two cantilevers. We have uh, cut off the arms that go to the fixation base, and we are going to uh, adjust it. Uh, in this case, we use some glaze and put it in the light cure unit. I don't normally do that, but you know, there are these uh, supports that come off of these teeth and when you burr them off, they're rough. So it is nice to be able to glaze and then prepare it for delivery. So it's a very nice looking restoration. Now you'll, you won't notice it. Uh, we didn't get a picture of it, but seven and 10 were deficient in the mouth. And so you'll see what that, the doctor just added some composite. All right, so small holes, all right, minimal lab work when you have small holes, and then delivery. And I'll show the tissue because that's always the, <laughs> that's always what we want to see uh, in these natural surgeries, so looking good. <clears throat> and then doctor just add a composite here outside the mouth. Um, normal um, flowable composite, and tried it in and then added some more. No pressure on the tissue, just met the tissue. And the case really looked terrific. Post-op implants were down. And that is our FP1 natural chrome. Please ask any questions. We want to support doctors in any way possible on these cases. It's just a tremendous alternative.